I want to transition to sports and hit two sports topics before we get on out of here today, all right? The first is Jason Tatum, the Celtics forward who addressed the media yesterday as the team is getting ready to defend their title. Tatum was asked about his motivation heading into this season, coming off two healthy scratches during the Summer Olympic Games in Paris, where Team USA actually won gold. Take a listen to what Jason Tatum had to say. Check this out. I'm curious what you learned from your experience at the Olympics this summer. That's a broad question. You want to be more specific? <laughs> Is it something you're going to draw motivation from, I guess? You want to address the, you know, I didn't play in two of those games? That's what you mean? That's part of it, yeah. Uh, motivation. Um, I guess I guess you could say that, and, and if you want to simplify it. Um, in real time, it was tough. Did I need any extra motivation coming into the season? Uh, no, I, I don't. I, I wouldn't. I'm not going to give anybody in particular credit that, you know, they're motivating me to come into the season. It was a unique circumstance. Um, something I wasn't uh, having experienced before in my playing career. But uh, I'm a believer that everything happens for a reason. I was coming off a championship, the highest of the highs, and cover a 2K, a new contract, and, um, you know, then that happened. and. Whatever the reason is, I haven't figured it out yet, but um, I am a believer that everything does happen for a reason. I listen to that sound, and I'm so appalled, I, it's hard to put into words. I want to emphasize that when it comes to head coach of Team USA, Steve Kerr, I consider him to be one of the top six coaches in the history of basketball. I think what he's accomplished in Golden State is nothing short of phenomenal. I think he was clearly worthy for being the head coach of Team USA. I think he's a future Hall of Famer. He personifies championships, winning championships in Chicago as a player, in San Antonio as a player, in Golden State as a coach. Had Dan, Mike D'Antoni listen to him when he was the GM in Phoenix and Mike D'Antoni was the coach and you wanted to bring on Tom Thibodeau as essentially his defensive coordinator. Had Mike D'Antoni listened to Steve Kerr. He might have won a championship with Amari Stoudemire, Steve Nash, and those boys at out west when Steve Kerr was the GM. So this man is a champion, but none of us are flawless. Imperfections invade all of us. And when I think about what he did to Jason Tatum during the Summer Olympics, it is inexcusable, damn near unforgivable. This is a first-team All-NBA player the last three years. This is a reigning defending NBA champion. And a month later, he was riding the bench for Team USA. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, not only was he riding the bench, it was in favor of two dudes who spend 82 games a year deferring to him and Drew Holiday, okay, and Derek White. They defer to him. How are you going to play them, but you can't find time for Jason Tatum, who's 6'9", got a handle, got a shot, can defend, can flat out ball. I'm not telling you that he should have averaged 20 or 30 minutes. LeBron James was phenomenal. Steph Curry was phenomenal the last two games, the semifinals and the gold medal game. I get all of that. Anthony Edwards was balling. The Bam out of Biles, the Joel Embiid's of the world, everybody. Drew Holiday and Derek White played well. I get all of that. I'm just saying, you can't find minutes for Jason Tatum? Really? And then you go up to him before the Serbia game, a game in which you won by 26 points, and you tell him, I may not be able to find time for you before the game? It's unforgivable. It's unforgivable. And I, I don't care what anybody say. I'm glad that Steve Curry ain't going to be coaching Team USA in 2028 because I think Jason Tatum is going to be on that team. But if Jason Tatum never wanted to see this man again, if he never wanted to talk to this man again, I couldn't blame him. Because how do you justify not playing him at all and basically telling him before the game you were going to be hard-pressed to find time for him. You didn't know how everybody else was going to play. It's one thing to make game-time decisions where it's in the throes of action and all of a sudden Serbia got you in a hole in the semifinals and you don't know what to do and so you stick with a lineup and you don't play somebody. I get that part. How the hell do you go to Jason Tatum before tip-off and tell him, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find time for you. I don't understand that. I ain't going to even get into how I feel about Jalen Brown not even being on the damn team. Well, what that brother can bring to the table. 
not just shooting perimeter jump shots, not just shooting threes, but his athleticism, his fervor, his passion, the way he attacks the basket, the way he can defend. He ain't on a team. We know that wasn't basketball reasons. We know that was about something else. Being a socially conscientious brother who's outspoken, highly intellectual and educated and is fearless. That's why he was kept off the team, in my humble opinion. That Nike beef, all of that comes into play. Because we know how influential Nike is with Team USA. As speculative as that may sound, it appeared to be a reality when it came to Jalen Brown. Because how do you lead that brother off the team? Him, off the team. Jason Tatum benched in favor of two dudes in Drew Holiday and Derek White who are on the Boston Celtics who spent all year deferring to those two who just won a championship. And by the way, Jalen Brown was Eastern Conference Finals MVP and NBA Finals MVP. Really? Really? But Jason Tatum just showed you who he is, class personified. He ain't going to feed too much into it. It's unnecessary. But it is what it is. It is what it is.